Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today we are revisiting the Black White Life Gain Bat archetype, which got an exciting new upgrade in Duskmorn. While a Leyline of Resonance got banned in Best of One out of the red decks, we get to enjoy a Leyline of Hope, which also starts on the battlefield if it's in our opening hand. And then now, if we would gain life, we gain that much life plus one instead. And as long as we have 27 or more life in standard, our creatures get plus two plus two. So a very nice bonus for gaining some life. And that's what this Black White Life Gain deck is all about losing life to draw cards and then gaining life to hopefully enable the ley line and some of our other synergies at one mana there's a case of the uneaten feast which says whenever a creature enters we gain one life especially powerful with a ley line of hope as we can now gain two life at least and then if we solve the case aka gain five or more life we can also later sacrifice it to start replaying spells out of our graveyard and then there's a Ruin Lurker Bat at 1 mana, 1-1 one, one Flying Life Link is perfect, occasionally lets us scry one as well. And then we've got a little bit of interaction with Cutdown. And then at 2 mana I'm currently playing the full set of Nowhere to Run, since in the wake of the Leyline of Resonance banning, the Aura strategies have become even more popular, so this is a great way to take out their creatures while potentially ignoring Ward and Hexproof, which those decks have a lot of. Then we've got Deep Cavern Band giving us another 1-1 life-linking flyer stapled onto some hand disruption, which is always welcome, especially important to take away sweepers from the opponents since our deck can be quite weak to those. And then a life creed duo, just a two-off here, which is quite fitting, can also gain us additional life when creatures enter, quite good with a ley line especially. And then Essence Channeler can quickly assemble a boatload of plus one plus one counters, as it gets another one whenever we gain life, so that will happen repeatedly with our flying life linkers and cards like Case of the Uneaten Feast. If Channeler dies, we can move all of its counters onto another creature we control, also very good with flying life linkers, and we can also give it flying and vigilance if we've lost a life this turn, so that can sometimes happen if we tap our pain lands to make a colored mana, so sometimes we'll have to do that intentionally, but it can also happen automatically with our Dark Star Augur, for instance, which at the beginning of our upkeep reveals the top card of our library, and then we get it in hand and lose life equal to its mana value. So Flying Dark Confidence, and it also has Offspring, so we can make an additional 1-1 version of it. Also very good with a case of the Uneaten Feast on the battlefield as a way to generate multiple creatures at once. And then last but certainly not least, Zoralin Cosmos Caller, 3-3 Flying Vigilance. Whenever any bat we control attacks, we gain one life. Also a great way to grow the Essence Channeler repeatedly. And when it enters or attacks, we can pay a black and a white and two life to potentially return a non-land permanent with mana value three or less from our graveyard to the battlefield with a finality counter on it. So that can give us a bit more graveyard recursion. So great against removal heavy decks, assuming they don't exile our creatures to begin with. And then Zorlin also very nice with the case, since we can maybe sacrifice the case to get stuff back. Zorlin gets back the case, rinse and repeat, so we don't even have to worry too much about finality counters on our creatures if we get them back with the case. So that can also set up some very nice recursion loops. And then we've got the ley line, which we're hopefully not revealing to the auger, since then we're taking four damage, but great to have in our opening hand. And then the mana base also has two copies of Scoured Barons, which also enters tapped, gaining one life, can also sometimes make a big difference. And then the Restless Fortress can also animate into a creature that can attack and gain more life, so that can also get things going. And then as we've mentioned, Caves of Coilos also quite synergistic with Essence Channeler, two Cavern of Souls naming Bat to make our stuff uncounterable, and then some additional basics and uh, Concealed Courtyard to round things out. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see what the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a promising hand with a ley line in our opener. And then turn two, we can maybe go case into Ruin Lurker. If I play Ruin Lurker now, then I'm missing out on the case triggers. Yeah, it's a close call. All right, so we'll go case plus Ruin Lurker. And then next turn can play another one, plus maybe a tap Barons, or if we draw an untapped land, go straight for Zorlin. Opponent blue-green. Might be a ramp deck. Okay, so... Can maybe start by attacking. And we've already solved our case. Thanks to the life gain from Scoured Barons. And our bands get plus two plus two. 
out of turn cash grab. So this is the Beanstalk control deck. All right, so we've got some three-powered flyers. If I play Zorlin, it's most likely getting countered, but uh, I guess I'll still run it out. It's not like I have any alternatives. And yep, put on counters. Still get to hit for six, so we do have a pretty fast clock. And the more life we gain, the harder it is for the opponent to get us below the leyline threshold. Another Rune Lurker isn't bad here. It's another threat for one mana. Although I'm sure we could find something more exciting. And I get to scry again here. Get rid of the courtyard. It's gonna be a Storm Chaser's talent. Interesting. So maybe this is something a little bit different than what I had in mind. And Duo would be good to resolve. Opponent maybe looking to bounce the ley line. Alright, fair enough. And then they can bounce their own talent back as well. So that happens. So we only hit for two. And now I guess I wouldn't mind an extra land. But I can resolve the duo. Light of hands, trigger prowess. But our opponent's got a long way to go, and they need to present some flying blockers. Go ahead and attack. Our opponent's gonna try and tap our creatures down with the crab, that works. They were probably still better off tapping the life linker. So I can play the case. Probably hang on to nowhere to run to remove the crab. Once we can maybe cast two of them. Beanstalk draws, triggers prowess. Could also still cast nowhere to run just to take out the otter. And if they fight over it, then we may be able to resolve the ley line with an extra land. So there's a few ways we can approach this. So we're at 32. One might have another Eddymark Crab. But uh, yeah, it's either a counter or ley line or tap my creatures down. It's going to be tap my creatures down. Can they get us below the threshold? I guess they can, by tapping the lifelinkers. Still get in for three, and then... We'll see what's next. I guess if they cast infinite crabs, we're in trouble. Bushwhack is not bad either. Take out the duo. They also have to watch out for my Restless Fortress, which can sneak in for two extra damage. And this is an Oculus. No, analyze the pollen. Can get another crab, I suppose. So yeah, they might actually be doing it. Yeah, this is a case of our removal not lining up. If these were go for the throat, this would have been a lot easier. Can still play Zorlin. Which is kind of a must counter, but they probably need to play the crab. And if they counter, we get in for two, points at two, so then fortress could be lethal by itself. Maybe they have a bounce spell they can still play alongside the crab. Eh, that resolved. And then we could also sacrifice the case to get some creatures back if needed. So crab number three, opponent also needing to take a damage off the Maya coast, falls to three. So they're definitely putting up a fight. But now we have potentially four lethal threats. 
Cash Grab cannot get the Bounce Spell, gets the Talents. Tolerant Terror for one mana and draws a card. And get in for 15. So if they have Eddie Murk number 4, they get to tap two creatures down. Let's see what happens. Augur. So step one, go to attackers, and then I can still play Augur second main. That point's gonna bounce Zorlin. And Acetophobe can gain them some more life. So they're at four. Do I attack? So let's say double auger will double chump, then it would take 10, and then we still get there next turn. So I think it's worth it to still attack. We don't have to chump since we just gained a boatload of life. Just have to be careful that we don't die to an auger trigger if we take 20. But there are points between a rock and a hard place. They've drawn half of their deck, or at least milled it. They might have more hard counters in hand. Yeah, there's not too many relevant cards they could have left in hand. Fight spells and life gain, and the fourth crab. That's the list. So yeah, taking 20 seems unnecessarily risky. So I'll chump. Take 15. They want to lose to revealing a ley line. And yeah, I think our opponent is at the end of the line, but they certainly put up a fight. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Can certainly keep this. Case into channel or into Zorlin. All the opponent on red aggro. I'm assuming this is not the aura version. So, at least against traditional reds, life gain's good. Although, can expect them to still have pump spells plus cell sword, which can potentially deal 20 plus damage on turn 3, even without a red ley line. But yeah, we still have a promising start. Not much else we can do. Opponent hits for three. And could also go case into Rune Lurker. Although Channeler would be a 3-2. Problem is I don't have a creature to put the counters onto. If it um, were to die. So I don't actually hate going case plus a Rune Lurker. And then next turn we already have a bat for Zorlin, So that can trigger. And then the second we play Channeler is going to be massive. Some of these versions now play Shock as well, so they could still maybe take out the Channeler as a 3-2. Opponent splashing a bit of green, maybe for Hexproof tricks. So we have Nowhere to Run times 4, which can ignore Hexproof. Let's see how much damage we're taking. Monstrous Rage is a good starting point. Finds a Might of the Meek, which they can cast. I mean, I could still die. Bump spell plus Cell Sword would do it. So do they have it? They don't. And I get to play Zorlin. Attack. Trigger again. Back up to 11. Will that be enough? Still not really in a position to block. Slick shots. That one I can certainly consider blocking. Yeah, I probably have to. Giant growth means they don't trade. Everything else, we should be fine. Our opponent with a questing druid, revealing two cards that will go to waste. And another case to draw. So how do we feel about Case into Essence Channeler? I think I feel pretty good about that. 
as opposed to Augur with Offspring, which will be better once we have Channeler in play. And this should be large enough to block now, and if it does trade, we still get to move the counters onto our lifelinker. So here's hoping. Opponent's got one card left, so is there any way we die? I guess not. Now play Augur with Offspring, which will gain us a ton of life. Could have been good to have a pain land to enable the channeler's flying and vigilance ability. I guess next turn we'll get there with Augur. And then I think I keep this one back on defense. Case is solved. And then next turn we'll lose life to the Augur, giving this flying. And then we can likely win the game. Yeah, there was definitely a window where they could have had a cell sword to win the game. Now we should have it. Block the large trampler. Can block maybe Swiss Spear and Challenger. Although maybe blocking Druid makes more sense since that way we don't incentivize them to target the Challenger with Valiant. Something along these lines. Ah, it's going to be a Snakeskin Veil. Actually doesn't grow the Questing Druid since it's another green spell. That's alright. Take our turn. So no life loss to give this Flying of Vigilance, but it doesn't matter if our opponent's dead anyway. Uh, if I animate Fortress and attack, this will trigger gaining us more life. So that's 14, 15, 16, 17. So yeah, that should be enough. And there we have it. Close one against Gruul Prowess. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand seems passable. Facing planes, and now I'm kind of into playing Rune Lurker into Essence Channeler, perhaps. Maybe should have considered playing Caves, even though it cost me a life, so I can cut down plus play a tap land if that's better. Other opponent appears to be on Boros tokens. So, yeah, it's going to be a long, grindy game. Might be better to play Channeler once it's a little bit bigger. For now, we could play the duo. And then playing Scoured Barons after Channeler also gives it an extra plus one counter. Alright, opponent's going to Torch again. Exiling our creature is also relevant for the case. So that may not um, get anything back. Still into Channeler plus life gain. So next turn I can play Augur with Offspring potentially. And if that can survive we can potentially pull ahead. But we're still facing a Sunfall deck so this is inherently going to be a bad matchup. Alright, opponents had their fair share of spot removal. Stuck on three lanes so maybe Augur can run away with the game now. Playing case first would have been nice, but just gotta get this online as soon as possible. And then channeler we can still maybe get back. Ah, opponent's got the forge. Might be able to outrace it. Alright, let's see what we can find. Augur and another case. Well, we can just go all in here, or we can deploy triple case first to set up our life gain synergies. Yeah, if I augur now with offspring, we're losing a lot of life. So I kind of feel better about triple case. Keep up cut down. And then ideally I just keep augur until post sunfall. 
Although if they're stuck on three, we can maybe afford to play it out, but the opponent found a fourth land. So Sunfall's definitely on our radar. Probably still hang on to cut down since I can still kill a 4-1 token in a couple turns. We get to untap. Finding a channeler and a land. And a ley line. Okay. So now a ley line into channeler looks good. Can attack first. I wouldn't quite be getting to the threshold here. But yeah, the channeler is quite big. Case is solved. Do we see a sunfall? If we don't, we can start doing some math to see if Augur with Offspring is lethal. Is their opponent draws? Do they attack? It is a free attack, so they should try, unless their plan is to level up talents. Alright, so let's do some math. So let's say I take 3 down to 16, and let's say on average maybe take 2 damage from the Augurs. Then I would be at 14. If I play Augur with Offspring, triple case triggers, and we get more life from the Leyline. So that's 12 life coming our way. So yeah, 15 plus 12 is 27 exactly. And then my Augurs get to extra power, Channeler will uh, trigger a bunch of times. So I think we can afford to take it, in case they had another Torture Tower left. And then we might still get there. My opponent did just level up, so possible that blocking could have worked out, but... Right, let's see what happens. So I don't want to lose too much life if possible. Two and three, hmm. So do we still have enough to get to 27? I would need to gain 16. I guess now we can also go for Zarl and get back Channeler, which gives us the same amount of creatures total, but also triggers Zarlan's ability. Alright, and then this should be enough once we attack with the Zoralin, since we'll get a bunch more triggers here. Also wouldn't have been able to cut down Channeler to move the counters elsewhere, because it has a finality counter, so it would have gotten exiled. And that'll do it. Awesome. So I managed to get there just before Sunfall. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is fine, not particularly exciting, without a Leyline or something like Zoralin facing turn 1 planes. Yeah, I'll get the Ruin Lurker going. And then we'll see if we want a Deep Cavern before Channeler. Opponent with a Rest in Peace, so they're tired of Graveyard decks. Could be somewhat relevant since it prevents us from returning stuff with Case or Zoralin. I guess we'll have a look and see an aura deck sheltered by ghost and ossification so they've got two removal spells but if I take ossification then they won't be able to deploy sheltered by ghost yet and then the second deep cavern band can take that away although innocence with faith flight can also get in the way of our flyers Right, cut down's not bad. So now I could... I guess we don't have double black, otherwise I could have played Deep Cavern bad, take away the uh, Faith Light, and then if they sheltered by ghosts I can cut down a response. Now I'm kind of liking just cut down the Innocence and play Channeler. And yeah, I guess Cut Down also just exiles the Innocence with Rest in Peace, so a bit of a nombo here. 
This is still risky if they find a cheap creature they can enchant with Sheltered by Ghost right away. But then I guess we'll still be able to play another band to take ossification. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw and we have our Leyline. So definitely gonna keep. Case plus Leyline can offset the life loss from Augur and hopefully we can pull ahead that way. Although still facing the red aggro slash combo deck here. Alright, at least Deep Cavern Band was a good draw. Although Scamp can still take it out, but can maybe prevent them from winning on turn 3 with Pump Spells and Cell Swords. And they've got the Slick Shot as well. So yeah, everything in place to win on turn 3 basically. Well, let's see if our Deep Cavern Band can disrupt it. Yeah, plenty of pump spells. Gotta go with Monstrous Rage over Swiss Spear, I think. Although now they might just pump Scamp and sack it to take out the bats. I guess we'll see. No blocks for now. Yeah, maybe blocking the Scamp still makes more sense, as opposed to just letting them hit me. And then they can sacrifice it to get it back. But yeah, opponent's kind of trained to keep Scamp in play to combine with the pump spells. Zorlin was a good draw too. So we'll go with that. Gain some life, attack, gain more life. Although still not really in a position where I can block so we'll have to do some math to see for that to scam getting pumped. So that would trigger prowess and slick shot. So let's say slick shot goes to six power. Swiss spear is at three, so that's nine. And then scam essentially hits us for ten damage by itself. So then I would die. So I probably have to block the slick shot then. They're still pumping the slick shots, not sure why. I guess they're not planning to sank this camp. So that happens. And I get to make some detectives. Opponent goes face instead of taking out the Deep Cavern Bats, also an interesting choice. And uh, Ruin Lurker the draw. So can only play one creature out, sadly. Maybe Augur still makes more sense, even though it can make me lose life, since it can profitably block a 2-2. And I'm still better off attacking with a Deep Cavern Bat. Can also sack the case at some points, but for now there's only Zorlin. All right, let's see if we can survive. Slick Shot is beatable, so they don't have any good attacks. And yeah, we might be able to turn the corner here. Feels like our opponent had the tools to win the game, but uh, maybe didn't use their pump spells optimally. And I think I would rather take out a detective. Otherwise I die to a revealed ley line if I take five. Take my turn. Another case is great. Okay, so how about case and then auger with offspring or just one auger plus one rune lurkers maybe on the safer side. So we don't lose as much life next turn and we also get a life linker in play. Back up to 12. Attack, maybe even leaving both augers back on defense. Another case is solved, so if trades happen we're fine with it, but now with double auger we can easily pull ahead. We'll see if they attack. Alright, I guess I'll just double block Swiss Spear then, take four, and then even if I double reveal ley line we're still alive. And then another Zorlin is perfect. And 
nothing to return. I guess never mind, I could have paid two life to return another Zorlin, which actually would have ended up gaining more life. I guess the drawback is that we get a Zorlin with a finality counter on it, which is maybe not quite as exciting. Alright, finds a turn. And at 23, I don't see your opponent getting there. Even if they string together more Might of the Meeks and a Cell Sword, that's not going to be enough. And our opponent explodes. It's awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We have a Ley Line with double case, so that's promising. Maybe a lack of cheap creatures. But at least we have a bit of removal with uh, nowhere to run. So, hoping to draw into some cheap bats. A Leyline as our first draw is kind of awkward. See a Frontliner, so might be a Red-White Convoke, a deck that's definitely fallen out of favor. Arabella, instead, also worth taking out. Yeah, I guess we'll set that up here. Can wait until their turn, perhaps. Don't expect any pump spells. Inspector. Sure, so I'll go for it now. Could be somewhat reasonable to deploy double case before playing Zorlin, just to get all those triggers. And opponent's got a Gleeful Demolition to make tokens left, so that's scary. Alright, now definitely going case plus Deep Cavern Bats. Can maybe take away a Recruiter, which would pump their team. Or a uh, Knight Errant, which would draw them more action. Case, also a good one, and double Arabella. So, take away the removal spell. Arabella's still going to be problematic, but hopefully we can gain enough life here. No blocks. Yeah, the case would have been brutal. Now we go for Zorlin. Bad attacks. And the case is solved. Opponent goes all out. If I block Arabella, they get to play replacements. But I think it might still be the move. What's the alternative? Just block a token here. Then our opponent can maybe make more tokens and do the same with Arabella once again. At least now if I top deck removal for Arabella, we should be fine. Or I might be able to gain enough life where we still survive another attack. A Rune Lurker is useful, so I can go Case into Rune Lurker. And attack. So a bunch more life gain coming our way. We're at 18, so we should be safe here. Ooh, Recruiter. That one could make a difference. So let's see what happens. Arabella triggers. Frontliner triggers. And they're actually gonna pump Arabella, which makes sense. So am I just dead? I think I am. If I double block Arabella, I'm still taking 13. Again, I guess 2. So it would be at 1. Well, I guess maybe this is the play. So yeah, 10, 13, but I gain 2 thanks to the Ley Line. And then next turn, what's my play? Augur, and then hope to gain more life to stabilize. Still gonna be close, but I think this is my best play. So we're at 1. 
Could also sacrifice the case to replay Zoralin. Is that better than just playing an Augur here? Baron's gains two regardless, so we can make that play. And then if I sack case, play Zoralin, I gain two upon entering. And then if I attack, I gain a bunch more. Yeah, I think that's fine. If a Ruin Lurker attacks, I do gain more life overall. I just have one fewer blocker, but yeah, unless they have another recruiter, that's maybe still better. So we're at 9, and gain another 4, up to 13. And I get to descend. Cave seems okay, although we can already play Augur with Offspring, so we might be able to do better. Opponent's also at 25 from all the life gain from Arabella. So we're still in it to win it. Night Iron's a good one. But at least it wouldn't be hurting me too much right now. And that's a swing and a miss, wow. It's kind of unlucky on their part. So yeah, go for Augur. It's gotta be better than Leyline here. And attack all out. Up to 23. And then gain 4 more up to 27, so threshold has been met. And our opponent explodes, another Leyline incoming, giving the team plus 4 plus 4 potentially. And that will do it. Awesome. Alright, so we get to see our life gain bats in action, and happy to report that the deck seems to be able to hang with most of the best of one meta decks at the moment. Now that we no longer need to worry about getting killed on turn 2, there's a little bit more time to set up all these life gain synergies. Now there will be harder matchups out there still, thinking of removal heavy decks with Sunfall, those make it difficult to leverage any of our life gain synergies since we need a board presence for those synergies to work. And then there's still a deck capable of presenting lethal around turn 3, like the various red aggro decks with Sword, and also the very aggressive aura strategies can be difficult if we don't draw a cheap interaction and the opponent can build up a huge threat, they can potentially make it uh, impossible to outrace a big first striking life linking creature, even with all the life gain synergies in the world. So yeah, overall, a decent deck, not necessarily busted in the current best of one meta, but a lot of fun to play, and there's also quite a bit of math involved, so if you're a fan of that, then maybe give this a try. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.